Hello, my name is Matt, and I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator for Thrive Matt Sue. And with me today is uh, Josh, who's Program Coordinator for DJJ, and Janet Ingle, who's the District Superintendent for Matt Sue Juvenile Probation with the Division of, uh, also with DJJ or Division of Juvenile Justice. Um, Janet, will you please share with me uh, more about your role at DJJ and helping our Matt Sue youth? Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, so um, my role is a district supervisor for the juvenile probation office here in Palmer um, for the Matsu Borough. And um, before I get into really what I do, I would like to tell you a little bit about what um, the division does for the community and for youth here in Matsu. So um, we are here to help those kids and families who are the children are uh, charged with a criminal offense. So um, if you don't have a crime, then we probably won't be seeing you. But if um, you're charged with an offense, then what we do is work with the youth and the family to support them and, and get through um, the charge. And while we're doing that, what we're looking at is um, our mission statement with DJJ is we wanna hold kids accountable for their charge and their, their behavior. And at the same time, we want to help prevent future crimes. So we need to teach them skills. And then what in unison with that, we're trying to promote safety in the community. And also we want to look at victims and make sure that they're restored and, and any harm that was done to them is repaired. Um, and we can't do this alone. We need community partners. So we have close relationships with other agencies in the community. Um, and a lot of our youth have to do community work service. So we, we do use other nonprofit agencies to do that. Um, and then uh, probation officers supervise the youth in the community or in residential treatment programs. So um, with the accountability and a, a we are hold, we're actually helping them uh, by supporting them, giving them guidance and looking at things like, are they in school and um, linking them to the different agencies that can help them. And my job as a supervisor is not so much having a caseload, but supporting um, probation officers that do have a caseload, um, staffing cases and looking at what will help kids best um, a lot of times parents are are um, besides themselves because it's it's hard when your your child's charged. So I talk a lot with parents um, and support the POs, whatever I can do. And um, my job also is making community connections with agencies like Thrive, OCS, the district attorney's office, those kinds of things. Um, part of my job is screening law enforcement referrals and deciding which path the report will go. Will it be assigned to a probation officer? Will it go over to a program called Youth Court where we divert a lot of cases and that's where they have a court of peers who hear the case and send down um, a sentence. And a lot of times that's um, letters of apologies, uh, community work service, those kinds of things. And then there's a lot of administrative types of tasks that I do, like chair the administ um, sorry the uh, statewide classification committee for those youth who are institutionalized and which program in the state will they go to. And we have um, four different facilities. But that's a little bit about what, what we do at DJJ and what my role is. I appreciate that. And I also want to just want to mention that, you know, I've known you for years. I, I met you originally through my work at my house. And what I've always appreciated is your heart for these students. Um, I know that it can, I know it's easy for you to become hard hearted in your work. And I'm grateful that you're in your role and you have not become hard hearted, um, but that you you're very sensitive and tender toward these toward these students. And and um and and wanting to see them excel and wanting to see them get their life on track and stay on track and stay out of the criminal system you know completely and so i just want to say I've, you know i've in watching you from you know uh, on the sidelines uh, i've just really appreciate that about you um well, thank Josh, you Matt. 
Josh, will you please share with uh, us more about your role with DJJ? Absolutely. And if I could add a little background, I've been with the Division of Juvenile Justice for five years. Um, I started at one of the facilities working directly with the youth. And through that role, I um, was involved in one of our grants uh, where I was able to secure funding for our youth that were in our facilities long term and then eventually transitioning back into the community. And through that experience, I applied for this role, which is program coordinator with the state. And the scope of my duties involve um, the management of funds and grants that we are allotted through different entities for the Division of Juvenile Justice and assisting probation officers, facility staff, um, and other coordinators throughout the state at each one of our facilities and probation offices with how to utilize these funds, either for youth that are with us long term or youth that are on our front end. And by front end, what I mean is kids that are on probation or kids that come to us through a referral to reduce repeat offenses or further involvement with us. Um, and then the last aspect of my duties is to take that information where we're working through these grants and funds with youth community partners, probation officers, facility staff, and produce a newsletter each quarter of the year and share with the public and the rest of the division the efforts we're making through this funding to help our youth. Perfect. Uh, well, again, we appreciate um, DJJ's partnership with Thrive. Uh, you know, We're featuring DJJ this month uh, with our Thrive Partner Spotlight, and we also wanted to to talk about the specific partnership that we have uh, that we're working on right now for our New Year's Eve event. Um, some of the funding that Josh is talking about uh, is from the, uh, and he's going to talk a little bit more about this in a, in a little bit, but some of the, the money that comes into the state from, from tobacco or not tobacco sales, marijuana sales is going to prevention efforts. And uh, um, through DJJ's partnership, um, we've, we've, uh, there's a $5,000 worth of uh, grant money that's available that's helping our New Year's Eve event uh, this year. And so I <clears throat> wanted to share about this event. Um, it'll be uh, on New Year's Eve, December 31st, start at 6 p.m. and at 1230 a.m. Um, we've got a bucking salmon ride that we're going to be uh, renting. We've got laser tag, basketball, dodgeball. Um, our bonfire area will be set up. We've got a big dance party area. Huge balloon drop, biggest balloon drop we've ever done. And um, we'll have an art lab all night. Um, it's $10 pre-sale, it's 15 at the door, but we Thrive never turns anybody away for financial reasons. Um, you can use the, the code, the promo code scholarship uh, to get 100% off uh, the ticket price if, if um, you would like a scholarship. And to RSVP for this event, you just text the word event to 907-745-5826. Um, this event is for exclusively for the Matsu youth sixth grade and up. Um, and incidentally, we are also looking for more parent volunteers um, or student volunteers. And so um, your students attend free when you volunteer. And we also have Kid Zone, which is for the younger children of staff and volunteers that's available um, so that you don't need to get a babysitter if you choose to volunteer. And so um, if you'd like to attend the event or if you'd like to volunteer, you can you can start the process either way by just texting the word event to 907-745-5826. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, we expect this event as long as we can hold the weather at bay. Um, I'm not sure which one of you I'm going to put in charge of that, but we need one of you to keep the <laughs> all this crazy snow we've been getting um, at bay so we can we can do this event in a few weeks. Um, Jana, thank you for your partnership with the, this event. Uh, why is this prevention effort important to you and DJJ? Well, um, while we work with youth at DJJ, we're looking at what strengths kids have, and we really want to build them. And one of the things we want to see is them being connected to the community and be involved in as many pro-social activities as possible. So since DJJ is really on the back end of things where we're reactionary to um, offenses that have occurred, uh, we don't have the staffing or resources to really go out and do the prevention work, although we would really love to. So this is like a perfect partnership because Thrive Matsu is on the front end, really doing an excellent job with pro-social um, events to prevent youth from going down the the wrong road. So I think we're we're really a good team um, from 
both sides. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, and Josh, will you please share with me more about the grant funds that are supporting this event? <clears throat> Uh, absolutely. As you mentioned earlier, um, it's tax from marijuana sales in the state of Alaska. Uh, back in, I believe it was 2016, the legislator created a sub fund within the general funds of the state for the primary purpose of the reduction of recidivism. If uh, those watching don't know what recidivism means, it is a uh, tendency to, to reoffend criminally. Um, and so they allotted uh, since 2016, 50% of the income from the tax on those sales to a slew of departments across the state, including our department, other ones are public safety and the Department of Corrections. And so each fiscal year from July uh, to the end of June, we were given about $75,000. And the logic behind that is to uh, support pro-social events, pro-social activities for youth and provide incentives to continue these pro-social engagements. Um, and so this New Year's event with the partnership with Thrive was just something that was huge for youth who are out in the community and have nothing to do on New Year's. Here's a healthy activity to go to. Absolutely. I, w what we have found is New Year's Eve and Halloween are both um, kind of notorious nights and we want to redeem those nights and make make sure that they're that the kids are having an awesome time but like you mentioned having a pro-social time and not not getting involved in uh things that they're going to regret down the road and so <clears throat> again thank you both uh for your help with this event and for your partnership with thrive um would either one of you like to add anything else to for our parents and students watching <clears throat> Um, don't be afraid to get involved with your community. Sorry, Jenna. Um, get out there and make connections with those around you and, and seek these events out. Um, that's all I have. Absolutely. Jenna? Yeah, so I was going to say something like that too, Josh. Um, basically, I hope to meet um, youth and parents out there in the community. In fact, I volunteered at the Halloween event. That was a blast. Uh, really fun. However... I would just add that if I don't meet you at one of those and you end up um, with contact with DJJ, I want uh, folks to know that it doesn't have to be a scary thing, that we're here to support you and work with you. Um, and, and a lot of times it's really a time for youth to reflect on where they want their life to go. And, and it can be a, a very um, good learning process so um, a lot of kids, it's what we call one and done. They get in trouble once and then we don't see them again. But if if they were to, um, youth are to come into contact with us, there's a, a statement that I've always remembered in my 22 years with DJJ, and it comes from the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. It's um, Their statement says, OJJDP envisions a nation where our children are healthy, educated, and free from violence. If they come into contact with the juvenile justice system, the contact should be rare, fair, and beneficial to them. And I, I really think the state of Alaska's Division of Juvenile Justice portrays um, the vision statement from OJJDP. So thank you for um, asking us to come today too, Matt. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you again for the work you're doing. and. And for um, for the prevention work that you are, you guys are engaged in every day, because like you've both said, you don't want uh, any of these young people to reoffend. And so, thank you very much uh, for for speaking with us today. Absolutely.